Yuan, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, let me just start by asking the question of, you know, Lego is such a beloved brand around mm. the world. Mm. Now, every long-standing brand needs to navigate wave of disruption. Any advice that you can have for us, how can we remain our true identity without losing it while, you know, instigating changes along the way? Yeah. Well, I think for a brand like Lego, at least for sure, you have to really dig deep into what's the essence of the brand. Mm. Lego is about every human being's urge to express themselves through creativity. It, it's immensely satisfying, whatever your job, whatever you do, to create something, to make something. It's emotionally stimulating. Mm. And I notice because everybody I meet and talk to about the Lego brand have lots of love stories that are sharing. My nephew did this, my son did so. I remember my own childhood, I did so and so. And then, yes, there are disruptions, but those are technologies. We moved from wooden toys to plastic. There was a disruption at very early stage. Sure. Now, of course, video gaming, interactive entertainment. So the, 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 the ways of playing change but the deep essence of the play to make things mm. and learn through play remains the same. Wow, so it's this idea that no matter what kind of physical form or technology around us, the core mission, the true mission, needs to be continued to be uh, stay true and reinvent the core business along the way. Absolutely, and, and therefore also to really try and understand what is our idea, but even recalling that it's not for us to de actually decide that. You have to really put your head to the ground and work with the uh, extreme users or even just those who are first-time users and try and understand what is it truly that triggers them. And often it's different things than you have decided it should be. You know, maybe you're about something else than you, you thought you were all about. Wow. So you joined Lego at a time when the company was facing some deep challenges and now you moved on to the role of the chairman of the group. How would you compare your day-to-day -day operation or role and responsibility as a chairman versus an operating CEO? What's the difference there? So during my time as a CEO, the company's uh, roughly five doubled in size. And at the same time, our holding company became much bigger and many of our adjacent activities grew in line with the legal group. And I was involved in all of that. So when I stepped down uh, as CEO to become an executive chairman, I started stepping into a bit more of an owner role, a more strategic role. And I would say I probably spent 100% uh, of my time now doing the 50% of what I did when I left the CEO role. So we needed to, to break up because my role had become almost impossible to do. We were a much bigger uh, business that were spreading into many new activities theme parks, foundational work, research, uh, venture, um, education sector, on top of the iconic uh, toys business that had also expanded a lot and become more globalized. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead we carved out new roles and started owning the different activities as very separate business models. So now I'm more focused on being an owner of an iconic brand mm -hmm. and how that gets executed in quite different businesses, business, business, business models. And so my focus tends to be on brand. Are we developing the brand in an appropriate way? Are we leveraging the brand? Can we put our name behind these activities? Are we even protecting the brand in a, in a good way? I'm very focused on senior people, CEO succession in the various entities, board memberships. I'm very focused on a subject like culture because I do believe the culture is how we express the brand in all our experiences. And then, obviously, the high-level strategic choices. Do we have the right technology roadmap for the brand? Are we falling behind on AI across our business system? Are we sufficiently invested in the consumer-facing technologies? Mm. Those are the sorts of questions that uh, I work on as an executive chairman. Wow, so this sounds like really much of a long-term horizon, really thinking, uh, you know, decades to come or mm -hmm. even 20 or 30 years to come, how can we take the Lego brand forward? Then what would be some of the advice that you would have for executive? Because companies usually are subject mm -hmm. to this short-term pressure. 
Right. The investors have certain expectation. They need to meet their quarterly number. Hmm. Yet at the same time, the company couldn't lose sight of that strategic vision over the long run. What would be some of the advice that you would have? Well, I think it is one of the dilemmas. <laughs> I'd like to say that first. I don't think there's a miracle cure for that mm-hmm. challenge. Uh, and I think we face that in many parts of life where we are, we are trying to fulfill conflicting demands. Mm-hmm. And I actually think rather than ignoring the conflict, it's better to look at it and say, oh, this is interesting. I'm in a conflict now. And how can I achieve a good outcome with that? I am very privileged working for a private business that's owned by a family. The way we typically talk about it is that short-term outcomes, including profit making, of course, is like oxygen. But we do all sit in this room to do more than just get some oxygen. We're trying to fulfill a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the balance between long-term and short-term is very much, you gotta win every Sunday to stay in the game. So basically, you know, make profits, create liquidity, be very disciplined about that, because that's how you gain the ticket to think about the long term. Mm. But always keep an eye on whether you're long term, you're sliding in the right direction and you are truly uh, fulfilling uh, that purpose. Huh. Now, Lego is a privately held company. Mm. And um, Tell me a little bit about the role of the family ownership and how you interact with the family owners to keep them engaged and interested Mm. about the Lego way it's heading to. Yeah, so so I was the first CEO really from the outside running the the, the, the core toy business. Mm. And uh, the family always stayed very close. I mean, it's very simple when there's just a family, you know, this is your shareholder meeting. And the way uh, they stayed involved with me and continue to be involved in, in today in a partnership with me as, as, as an owner role is to really literally travel out and visit staff, visit stores, visit facilities, meet with customers, trying to sense the world, go to places like IMD to get exposure to what's happening in the future, what we ought to be interested in. So it's a very engaged role, I'll call it uh, active and engaged ownership. Uh, meaning that the family has a perspective on the future. It has a perspective on geopolitical events. It has a perspective on sustainability. And it's very clear about what decisions it wants to be involved in. Mm. In our case, the family has said, we want to choose all board members. We want to choose the CEO. We want to be part of the five most strategic decisions every year Hmm. in every business. So that might be, you know, should we go with this uh, retailer in the future or should we open our own kind of channel to sell in this country? That that sort of some iconic decisions. And with that, I think they've given themselves a small sliver of the totality of decisions being made in the business but those that sit in a way at the very highest level that shape uh, the overall direction. Mm. So it's quite an, an, an active and engaged model, but it's still one that allows a board and especially a team of management to feel fully empowered and therefore also fully accountable to the owner. Ah, so you are here at IMD today and you interact with different business executives and top leaders as well as thinkers as well. Um, in your mind, what would be, how would we describe, you know, the future leadership for the second half of the 21st century? Hmm. If there's any major, you know, weather, watershed point that uh, can exemplify as this hmm. future leadership that needs to be a, a, a new embodiment, what would that be? Yeah, well, I think there are a couple of things that I think is super important. First of all, I think we're coming at age in the science of management, right? I mean, so, so in other words, this is the first century where we went out fully informed about how to think about management. Mm. And we can continue to run the traditional hierarchical command and control organizations. People are much better educated. They have much higher expectation. So I think we need to be great at offering autonomy, a creative space, room for critical thinking. We need to leverage everybody in the organization to really... Uh, surprise us. You know, we no longer want organizations where you do what you're told. We mm. want organizations that don't do what they've been told, that sort of come to us and say, why are we not doing this instead? And management uh, needs to be more of a coach rather than, 
you know, a, a, a boss that issues uh, fixed mm. uh, uh, orders. I think also businesses will increasingly be in collaboration and competition with each other. So we need to understand how we're part of a not just a vertical food chain, but mm. more of a lateral system, an ecosystem that we participate in. We need to be much more respectful of diversity and inclusion mm. as the world's demographic change so dramatically. True. And then I think a final point that's unavoidable for business in the 21st century is the subject of sustainability, uh, both as businesses playing a role in shaping uh, societies in really positive direction, but certainly and not least also climate change, which mm. is probably our biggest human challenge in this century. And if we don't solve it, we are creating a huge debt and overhang for future generations. And I think, unfortunately, really getting to the bottom of the climate change challenge will require a very radical transformation of how businesses operate. Well, Jan, thank you so much for spending your time and discussing all these important issues with us. And uh, I'm sure everyone would benefit a lot from what we have just discussed. Thank you. Thank you so much.